Welcome to the Art of Decluttering podcast. I'm Amy Ravel. And I'm Kirsty Faruja. But hello and good Monday to you because that is how I am continuing the introduction to our podcast while we are still not together in the studio. Oh, it's going to be a long few months. It's going to be a long few months. I really, really am looking forward to awesome audio quality again. Yes, I am. Um, yes, I do want to, to apologise to people because yeah. we're doing what we can. We're making the best of a situation that we're not together. We're normally together in the studio recording, but thanks to this season that we're in, um, we're still not able to... Um, justify flying or want to put ourselves at yeah risk of flying. Exactly. <laughs> yes I like you too much to just chuck you on a plane right now yeah yeah <laughs> so um we wanted to reintroduce ourselves to you all today because we've had so many new listeners um over this season so we thought we'd just do a quick hello quick introduction um you can always go back and listen to our welcome um, intro um episode and get to know us by listening to all like very 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 close 200th episodes now <laughs> far out we've got to do something special for our 200th i know it's only i think it's only a week or a week away maybe oh. like two weeks away all right excellent let's brainstorm that maybe people can let us know in the community what we should do for our 200th episode maybe i should learn how to say 200th without it sounding <laughs> like i'm trying <laughs> way too hard um, i'm amy so i am one half of the art of decluttering I'm a professional organiser and have been so for six years, I think about six years. Um, it's a passion of mine, like it is for Kirst. I'm married to Cal. I've got two boys who are now 12 and 14. I don't know how that happened. Um, I am a minimalist, my own version of minimalism, I think I should say. And the most boring thing about me is that I love prime numbers. I'm a total geek and I love prime numbers and Kess, tell us about you. <laughs> and where do you live, Amy? I live in Melbourne, Australia. Yes. Whereas I am Kesty, I was born in Sydney but grew up in Melbourne and that's how Amy and I know each other. But I now live in Sydney again, strangely enough. I um, lived in Sydney for the last 10 years. Uh, we've just had our anniversary over Easter of living here. And I am married to the amazing Simon. You can listen to an episode with Cal and um, um, there's another episode where you can meet Simon as well. So that's really cool. I'll put them in the show notes so you can listen, meet our husband. <laughs> um, and I am the mother of Oliver, who's almost 11, and Emily, who's counting down the 22 days or something ridiculous to her birthday, <laughs> where she'll be turning nine. Um, and, um, yeah, I am also a professional organiser. It's coming up to my eighth year of working as a professional organiser. Before that, I was an accountant and a financial planner um, before children. And, um, yeah, most boring thing about me is, oh, that's a really tricky. Because there's tricky, so many. <laughs> well, just because... <laughs> What things I find boring, other people might find interesting. It's so subjective. Boredom <laughs> is subjective. Um, boring thing about me is that I um, don't wear an engagement ring at the moment. Oh, me neither. How come you don't wear one? Because it gets in the way at work. Yeah, and same. I also scratch Simon in in when we're sleeping. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> With it. <laughs> Yeah, so, I haven't worn um, one since I became a professional organiser. Yeah. Interesting. So, Maybe we should get matching tattoos. It, but you found it interesting, not boring. That's true. See? But can Subjective. we get matching tattoos, please? Um, if you want me to get divorced, sure. Ah, does Simon not want tattoos? No, Simon has a real aversion to tattoos. Oh, so does on. Cal. I really so, wanted to, I think we've talked about this before on the podcast. I really wanted yeah. to get one and... Cal said he would. He doesn't really like them, and so he's like, you know, he was like, "Go for your life if you want to," but I don't like them, and I was like, "Well, I'm not going to because I love you, and I don't want to do something that you don't like." Yes. Well, okay. Simon was a little harsher in his response. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yes, it sounds like you were getting divorced. <laughs> 
Well, yeah, his core value, one of his core values is freedom, but it doesn't extend to me. <laughs> <laughs> because he's literally said, I will issue you with a divorce decree. If that you is get the best. I'm and, pretty sure he wouldn't. Which is so... <laughs> no, he wouldn't. Which is so funny because he really does honour and value marriage very highly, which shows something about his absolute distaste of wow. tattoos on me. Yeah, like, yeah, that's and right. The idea of me getting it. Oh, I really like them. Um, I really like tattoos. All right, that today's topic when is the boys not about die, that. We'll get tattoos. Done. <laughs> we'll get matching tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the best. What will it be of? Um. Uh, I really want to get an Alpha and Omega one, oh. or. Um, oh, I've got so many ideas of tattoos. Cool. So many. Let's have a – that's something that we can't declutter very easily. No, though. it's really complicated. So, yeah. Your wallets um, and purses, today, however. <laughs> yes, today, we, now that we've done the introduction, we are talking about wallets and purses and wallets versus purses and whether you call – the place that you carry cash and cards, a wallet or a purse. Yes. So I'm interested to your theory, Kirst, because I have the correct answer because <laughs> I've done oh. some research and I've done multiple oh. source research and I intentionally oh, didn't got... send you the links because I wanted to be the oracle. Yes, you, you, you've got, <laughs> as Kate and Mandy say in the 2Ps podcast, you've got your laptop out. I do have my laptop out. That is exact. And I have multi-tabs open. And for once, more than just Wikipedia. (laughs) Oh, wow. Although that is included. I should, you know, caveat that. (laughs) So tell me what you think a wallet is. Well, and let's also caveat this by Australian language is different to, say, American language, which Americans call purses their handbags yes. what we call handbags they call purses yes um i'm really curious as to what they call purses pocketbook isn't it <laughs> isn't it their pocketbook pocketbook okay okay let me google hang on oh what? no don't <laughs> go down that rabbit hole what is a pocketbook okay oh so a record of <laughs> caution that's probably not what i meant um a wallet a purse or a handbag in the us so okay. it could be all of the above this is not to stereotype. This is just my understanding as I grew up, and it is not at all based on gender nowadays. So, a purse would be what a woman would carry that has uh, lots of space for lots of cards and lots of receipts and lots of money. <laughs> uh, whereas a wallet is typically in what a male would carry and it would be either easy to open like a book like just a double fold like or what single folded over or maybe triple folded but never it's really only for um notes and for cards and there may or may not be a space for coins Hmm. how does what is your different understanding? Yes. Yeah, so before I've... you get it, before you did all this research, what was your understanding of the difference between a purse and a wallet? I think growing up, I probably would agree with you, Kess, is that I think growing up we called my dad's receptacle of money and cards a, wall- a wallet <laughs> and my mum's receptacle of wall- of money and cards a purse. So that's how I think as a child I would have known it. But I think once I kind of got to the age where I was buying things, like buying the wallet or the purse, Mm. I always purchased what would typically be known as like a men's wallet. So I would always get – I was always into the surf wallets, you know, those ones that were like kind of a surfy material um, and quite non-gender marketed. So I think probably from about that age, 13, 14, I started calling everything I ever purchased to be my receptacle of money and cards as a wallet. And I think I stopped differentiating. So how about I'm going to, and Kess, you can put all of these in the show notes, but let's go really basic. So I just Googled what is a purse and it comes up with 
the British or the North American option. So I'm going to read out both. So according to just dictionary.com, a purse, if you're in Britain, is a small pouch of leather or plastic used for carrying money, typically by a woman. And if you're in America, it's called a handbag, (laughs) just because you guys like to confuse us a lot. And then when I did the same for wallet, a wallet is a small flat case that can be used to carry small Mm -hmm. personal items such as paper currency, credit cards and identification documents, photographs, transit passes, business cards and other paper or laminated cards. That's from Wikipedia. So the pictures also that come along with that are what you would conjure up in your mind as the typical so the women, the woman's purse is like a little, you know, the ones we, that our mums used to have that are like the little switch clip at the top and then it would open up. That was like this little metal clasp at the top, whereas the mm. men's one is just the wallet fold over. It doesn't have kind of any zippers or buttons or yeah. whatever. It just folds. Yeah. yeah. So that would agree with you. Then, However... <laughs> I found this really cool article. Um, it's at mybestwallets.com and it's a blog called Wallet versus Purse, which is where I stole the name of our podcast episode today. And it's got really cool things. It's three differences between a wallet and a purse, and are they gender specific? So, oh, excellent! Yeah, this is this is just so much fun. Um, when I purchased my wallet for Mother's Day, I went back and I had a look at the website that I purchased it from. And even though they're stereotypically women's purses, so they're very much for women. They've got like pretty birds on them, and um, they've got the big zip, and it's like the size of I don't know, like a brick. <laughs> It says wallet. At no point in the description or the title does it say purse. Interesting. Uh Uh-huh. Do you want me to keep going or have you got anything you want to add as I go? It's really semantics, isn't it? It totally is. And it is totally subjective as well. Yes, but I've got some some history for you too. I've I've really gone down (laughs) the rabbit hole, (laughs) Kirst. Go for it. Okay. Share with our listeners. Yes. <laughs> so in the 17th century, a wallet was really used for just keeping your cash. So that's what a man would use. And its purpose was so it could fit in one of his pockets. So the, yeah. the wallet was made not so that you could keep everything in it, but so that it could hold paper bills and coins. And then as... ID cards and licenses and stuff have evolved and multiplied. It has then got new slots. So the slots are a new thing, you know, where you put your cards on like this. Yep. yep. So that's brand new. And the shape and the size. Brand new. Well, you know, we're not in the 17th <laughs> century. <laughs> so today's wallets, it says focus on minimalism. But if you look back at your grandfather's wallet, you'll see a difference. Back then, a wallet was for the man, an equivalent of what a purse was for a woman, an accessory designed to hold everything from money to receipts. And then as things have evolved, the men's wallet have given space for cards, but have tried to remain small and minimal as they would have been back in the 17th century. Let me tell you about a purse. Well, let me tell you the difference first. So the, it says the most obvious des, um, difference is the design. So men's wallets are inspired, as Kirst would say, by the bifold lines. So the idea mm-hmm. is that they're designed to fit in your pocket, traditionally pocket. made out yeah. of leather. Obviously, we know that they can be made out of who, whatever you want now. Um, women's wallets are generally too big to fit inside a pocket. That's why manufacturers have since come up with minimalist unisex wallets that appeal to both men and women. So let's go to what is a purse. So this time we're going back way back, back, back than the 17th century. We are going back to 3000, well, I don't even know how to say this time, 3300 BC. So like a really long time ago. And purses were used to keep coins in. So they would sit in a pouch. So your purse would actually sit within a pouch, which would be the equivalent of a handbag. And so your coins were easy to access because you could pull the coins out without having to tip the contents of your whole pouch out everywhere. So the original shape of the purse is still maintained today. 
So I'm going to jump down to the part where it says wallet versus purse, and it's got three distinct differences. The first curse okay. is size. Mm-hmm. Do you want to have a guess at what the difference is? The wallet can fit in your back pocket and a, and a purse cannot. Perfect. <laughs> Number two is purpose. The wallet is only for cards and paper money and maybe coins, whereas a purse is for every single one of your coins and every single one of your paper <laughs> and every single one of your receipts <laughs> and every single card you've ever owned in your life. <laughs> yes. It says you may also keep tampons, home keys and a smartphone or even makeup. <laughs> yes. yes. And the third is about convenience, which is actually not that much of a difference, but it's saying that you have all the things that you need very quickly when you're out and about at, at hand for you. So there's my research. That concludes my research piece. <laughs> so therefore, you, according to the definitions, you should now call your purse a purse, Correct. not a wallet. Correct. Right, I won't. So I stand. To, I stand. <laughs> justified yes I feel justified in my calling you out last week (laughs) yes you are totally justified but I would argue that colloquialism means that we actually call a women's one a wallet most of the time now I have never ever called it a wallet this is what the poll is going to be about this week my friends okay yes I want I need photos I need you to create a photo of a wallet versus a purse and ask people do they call what they own a wallet? What the picture of the a wallet? The picture is just call... of my purse. What's this called? Yes. Yeah. And so let's see what people say. Or what do you call it? It's yeah. more about what do they call it. Yes, that's true. I would never ever call your purse a wallet. Yeah. But you do. Yeah, and I would never and call so it I a purse. To, and this is why I just go, is it an Amy thing or is it colloquialism? Is it is it a Melbourne thing? Is it an Australian thing? Is it a worldwide thing? Yeah. And I think we're going to find out that it's an Amy thing. Oh, no way, because I bought it from a place that called it a wallet. If it's an Amy thing, then it's an also a monster thread thing. So there's at least two. <laughs> there's at least, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, Amy, what's in your wallet slash purse? My purse. I'm going to call it a purse. <laughs> Okay, I am going to try and find the most random thing. I've got, let me tell you what I've got in here. I've got a check that I need to bank. Just tell us about yeah, Tell us about your purse. Okay, let me give you a walkthrough because this will be the most exciting five minutes of your life. I've got a check that needs banking, <laughs> as opposed to the explanation. Oh <laughs> yeah, which was riveting. <laughs> yes, I've got my driver's license <laughs> and the five card, like credit cards that I've got. None of them are actually credit cards, but the debit cards. I've got a wad of cash, a big wad of cash, because nobody can use cash in ISO, so it just keeps growing. I have three petrol vouchers, you know, the ones where you get like four cents off. Mm -hmm. Then there's a zip. I'm opening the zip and I've got in here. Oh, I forgot I had that. I've got four Hoyt's vouchers <laughs> that the kids got for Christmas, but because cinemas are all closed down, so they were for my grandma, so they're still sitting in my wallet because, excuse the crinkling that you're all going to hear, but, you know. Um, here's, here's possibly the most random thing I have in here. I have an Ikea refund card. The story behind it is I returned uh, just some things that I'd purchased, and I think it was about $70 on refund. So they gave me a refund card, and I said, yeah, that's fine. I'm here all the time. I went upstairs and was having, I must have had a kid with me and I said, oh, let's buy a little dessert and say it came to $8. They, I used the refund card on that. When I got back downstairs to pay for the products that I was purchasing, they said the refund card was empty. I said, it can't be empty. I literally got it like half an hour ago. We purchased some desserts and now you're telling me it's empty. And their system was down, so they couldn't like do this like thing where they can check all the transactions on the card. So it's been sitting in my wallet for probably six months because I don't know if there's still like sixty five dollars on there or not. So that's probably the most random. You, so you've got to just remember to go back when you're at IKEA next. You just got to Correct. remember because you have been at IKEA in the last six months. Possibly not because I've been doing it online. 
Uh, okay. Yeah, so um, possibly not. So then I've got some Bunnings receipts for a client. In fact, I can get those out, Kirst, because I've already emailed those to you. Mm-hmm. Then I have $4 in coins. Then I have one single business card of ours. <laughs> I don't know why there's only one. Then I have some receipts for petrol that I need to claim. And then I've got just the random cards. So my working with children's check, Medicare card, ambulance cover, Jesse's public transport card and then Mikey cards. And then I have the random pocket at the back. Let's see what I have. I've got oh, I've got my Australian Red Cross blood donor membership card from let me see if I could well I was living at home because it's got my home address so it's at least 20 years old. Here we go. The 5th of October 1999. Now, the reason I have it in there is it has that my... That would be the most random thing, well, I think. Well, possibly, except it has my blood type on it. And so that's why I've kept it in there, because I think if I'm ever in a car accident and they're like, does anyone know her blood type? Of course, they're going to want to search through every piece of paper in my wallet on the off chance that I've kept the piece of paper from 1999. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, I have... Um, this may be too much information... But I have a little card from when I had a marina put in that tells me what date it's due to come out. And I have, oh, I have a loyalty card, Kirst. I didn't think I did. This is for where I I get massages from. I don't think I need that anymore because I get massages like once a year. It's from when, Kirst, remember that time you bought me a massage for my birthday or Christmas? It's from that place. Okay. But I think I'm going to chuck it because I actually am happy just to pay. All right, that's gone in the bin. Would you would you look in your purse for your Myrina details? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I don't know where else I'd put it. With your medical record? Yeah, but no, it's, that's all paper and this is actually like a card. It's like but a laminated card. Couldn't it go in it with the paper? Yeah, I guess it could. Just, it just doesn't just amazing to me amy i just would have thought that with your brain the way it works it would go with all your medical stuff because it's to do with your body yeah it probably should yeah yeah i think you're right and maybe i'll just put a reminder in my phone that has the date on it yeah well that was the other thing yeah perfect okay we solved that problem okay so yes there are a few random things in my wallet But you don't have one to share, Kirst. Well, I do, and I can tell you what's in it okay. because I um, have a purse that I very, very rarely use. And if you want to hear more about that, go back to last week's episode and listen to why I don't have a purse. But or I can say or why more you now. don't use I have your a, purse. Yeah, I don't use a purse. So I have a purse. It sits in my handbag, but my handbag only ever comes out with me when I go to clients. Um, I don't carry a handbag around with me um, in my day to day. And when I go to the shops, I never take my purse. So my purse is only has the absolute bare minimum in it. It doesn't have any coins. It doesn't have any cash. It doesn't have any anything random in it. Everything is very intentional. So it has all of my bank cards. Which are how has, many? Um, four. Is that including? Um, no, because you've got others that are in your phone or not? No, I've only got four bank cards. Okay. I've got a credit card, um, my um, family bank card, like FPOS card, mm-hmm. our work card, mm-hmm. and my work yeah. card. Cool. So I only have four cards. Um, Then I have my driver's license, I have my Medicare card, and I've got my private health insurance card. Um, That is all that is in my purse that is. And the reason I don't take my purse out with me is because all of that information is on my phone. And I, oh, the other thing that's in there is my Woolworths Everyday Rewards card. Mm Mm-hmm which we didn't talk about last week, is the only real rewards card that I use. Do you use the card or do you use an app? Well, I use an app now. Yeah. But meaning like when oh, we were talking about how we don't use yes. loyalty cards, I had totally forgotten about 
I do use Woolies. Yeah, and I uh, use Flybys. Whereas I don't use Flybys. Yeah, yeah, whereas I, I, do, whereas I don't use the Woolies one, I chuck that. Yeah. Interesting. So um, everything is stored on my phone. So I've got, I use Apple Pay um, and um, in New South Wales, our driver's licenses are on the app and Medicare now do apps where you have your card in there and um, same with Booper. So I see no reason on a daily basis to carry a purse around with mm. me. Um, my purse is big enough that I could fit my phone in. Um, so sometimes, like if I'm going, if I was to go to a new doctor's, um, I would take mm-hmm. my purse out with me just in case they needed to see the physical Medicare card. Yep. Um, but no, I have not. The one and only time I have had an experience recently that I actually needed the physical cards was when I was to do a refund. Mm, of course. Physical card to refund it back onto, which was super annoying. That, And so that is the only reason that I, ha- I haven't actually just relegated purse to all the cards into a drawer and mm. the purse into a bin. Yeah. That, that is the only reason. Oh, this is so interesting. I don't know if other people find this might be the most boring thing ever for other people, but I just find it so interesting how different ways there are to do the same thing. It's so cool. Okay. Is there yes, anything? I find it. I'm interested. Is there anything else it's you want to share about wallets and purses? Oh, there's definitely like, so let's talk about how to declutter your wallet. And oh, purse. yeah, that's important. Um, yeah, let's just not talk about ourselves. Let's <laughs> encourage people. <laughs> so uh, often when we are with clients or when I'm out with friends or, you know, observing other people in their daily lives, I see women with purses that are like bursting at the seams. Mm-hmm. They can't close them they can't find what they need um, in a hurry um, often so uh, what do they have what do you what do people typically have in their purses slash wallets <laughs> oh, just receipts galore receipts receipts yeah, receipts receipt. galore if you are a business person and you need to keep receipts you can just download them um, straight to an app or take a photo of them. Literally, I've got a friend who, as soon as she gets any receipt anywhere, she snaps a photo of it and chucks it straight in the bin. So even if she then doesn't actually need to upload that photo somewhere, at least she's got the copy of it. So I just get rid of receipts. They're just a pain in the neck. I have two in my phone at the moment because I need to claim GST on them. And that's because I legally need them. And I will take a photo of them when it comes time to do my best and then I will chuck them. What else, Kirst? What else yeah. do people keep in And there? you wouldn't need, and you don't need to keep them in your purse. No, you it's just that I have a yeah. system at home. Correct. And I do yeah. have a system at home. They're just the two that I haven't taken the photo of yet. Yeah. All the rest yeah. are filed. So, or chucked. <laughs> do what do people need to keep in their wallets or purses? Oh, goodness. You've just opened a can of worms. Anything you want. <laughs> You're the one that's got to yeah. carry it around. But I wouldn't keep anything yeah. in there that you don't regularly need when you're out and about. So the business card of your dad, probably you're not going to need that. The reward or loyalty card of a shop that you don't go to, probably don't need that. A million coins. Tell us what what do you do with coins because I know that you don't carry coins. Um, I There's a little secret pocket in my car that coins go in. Or, uh, so if I... I don't pay cash for anything ever. So I don't very regularly have coins anymore mm. because use, I've used my bank card all the time to pay for things. So I don't have a issue with coins. I don't, you know, like there's no dilemma to solve with coins because I just Yeah, you're not getting change. Coins. Yeah. Yeah, that makes total sense. So, and you don't need it for parking anymore. No. It's all on your card. I, I literally cannot remember the last time I had coins. And to, to be honest, my favourite clothing to wear is jeans. 
And so I can put them in my pocket. That's true. We still need coins occasionally in the Ravel household. So sometimes the primary school will do like gold coin donation, dress up day or a fundraiser. Um, and up until this last season, our basketball club, you had to pay like $8.50 every game that you went to. And so we would, we've got a little container near the front door and we would put all our coins in there so the kids each week could just grab their $8.50. Yeah, we do have some coins in our house, but I don't, there's no, I don't need a receptacle for them yep. in my daily life. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, but, and, and that's why I'm like, I totally understand why people still carry purses. Um, you know, it's a great holder of coins and cash if that's how you do life. But um, I, did, I really wanted to encourage people to um, look through their purses and wallets this week and see if there's anything in there. You know, is there a gift voucher? that you haven't used because you couldn't see it in between all the receipts that you've, mm. that you've put in there. Is, and that's, um, is there a piece of jewellery that you took off for some reason and you realise as you're going through your purse or your wallet <laughs> um, that that's where that missing earring's been or that missing ring has been because your wallet and purse has been so big. I think for me the reason that I wanted to do this um, podcast episode was because I want to relieve people of the frustration um, and I want people to have freedom um, which sounds r- funny that you can have freedom in your wallet and your purse um, but you totally can and you can you know maybe by me having a conversation about not even carrying a purse it might um, in trigger people to reassess their need mm. for a purse and I'm not saying that everybody needs to be like me by any stretch of the imagination but I do want to encourage you to really you know that's our heart for you is to encourage you to assess everything in your life like is it do you need it yeah um, and do you, and why do you need it and for what purpose do you need it so Amy and I are very different. I don't need a wallet or a purse. Amy finds her need for it. So, mm. And that is cool. She and has I've also got a very minimalist purse. Yes, but I've actually gone. So I used to keep my driver's license and our like bank card in my phone case. And I've actually taken them out of there yeah. and choosing because I just found that I would do that. But I don't know. There was just it just didn't work for me. I don't know why it just didn't work. And so I've actually gone back mm-hmm. to carrying my phone and my wallet. And I'll see how that goes. It's also possibly because I love my new wallet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you also, there's nothing, you are very intentional about what goes into your wallet. Yes, um, I can you know, find even, everything quickly. Uh, yes, and that's our heart for people. Um, around The whole purpose of decluttering is so that you can easily see and use the things mm. that bring you joy. Yeah, decluttering is um, all about retrieval, you, isn't it? Well, yeah, organise is all about retrieval. Yeah. And decluttering is all about moving towards the vision that you have for your life. Yes, thank you. Um, yes. Uh, so we had um, somebody in our Facebook community today, um, so this is Tuesday before, so, you know, nearly a week ago, um, asking the asking our Facebook group, what does a before and after look like of a decluttered life? And I thought that that was really, really curious question to ask, like a really interesting question to ask. And we've done, we've spent this lot in the podcast um, um, over the last couple of years. But for me, it is the freedom. It's, uh, you know, and I think that that's why I'm excited that I don't carry a purse around because I find it so much, for me, that's freedom Mm. is being able to get up and leave with, I need um, and um, that's our heart for you is freedom um, is to go through life and have your whole home and everything that you do in life um, bring freedom to you and to other people so um, to answer that lady's question in the group I said well this is what life looks like the other side of decluttering for us it means that We've got loads of time in our day Mm -hmm. um, and our week to not be tidying up and to not be cleaning constantly and not to be, you know, what takes our time is caring for things 
um, you know, like Simon does the gardening on the weekend, but that's um, taking care, that's maintaining something. It's not tidying up and being consumed with um, forever, like Groundhog Day tidying mm, up. Mm. Um, I, I've been even thinking about it um, over the last couple of weeks that our evenings run really smoothly because you know one our kids are older than toddlers so life is in that way a whole lot easier <laughs> than that season of our lives just by the nature of the age of our children but we we come home from school now that they're back at school for the last day um but even with even during ISO and homeschooling when school's finish when they're finished their learning we get to play because there's no like yes we've got clothes online that need to be brought in and there's dishes to do after dinner but there's nothing else to do (laughs) that's so good we're free we're free to do what we want to do whether that be um playing a board game which my kids are totally over thanks to i oh i wish mine were over it Ah, oh, they refuse to play anything with me anymore. Yeah. Um, so most of the time it's watching telly, you're being creative in, in other ways. But there's no, um, there's, there's just freedom because there's just no, um, I don't feel like we, I, me and my family are on that um, um, mouse wheel. That's, a, that's the image that's coming to me. Mm. Um, there's no, like, forever just going around and around in circles. Like, yes, it's Groundhog Day from the fact that we still need to wash our clothes and wash our dishes. Um, but the kids tidy up after they play with things. Mum and I tidy up after we do things. Everything gets put away when we see it out of its place. Everything has its home. And it's not, there's just not a lot to do. Love <laughs> like, it. Which gives us a lot of time to do what we want to do rather than what we have to do. Mm. So, and I know that sounds a bit randomly um, tangential to a person, a wallet, um, but there's not even like, you know, one thing that I would say to people is, you know, next time you're at a doctor's appointment or sitting waiting for somebody to do something, instead of scrolling Facebook and Instagram, how about you go see your personal your wallet yes. and just declutter that? And then it's not something that's frustrating you next time you go to the shop or next time you're looking for that gift voucher that you can't find because it's in between all these receipts or you don't even remember that you had it because you haven't seen it for months. (laughs) Yeah, it's about taking advantage of having a simple life means you have freedom to do the things you want to do. And that's what this podcast is all about. That's what we are all about. Um, And... Mm. Can I add to that, Kirst? We have a little friend that's all about that too. This morning on our Facebook community page, you have to go in there. There is this beautiful little girl called Julia who's seven years old and her mum has given us permission to share this um, with you. She's from Canada and Julia has written a Don't Put It Down, Put It Away song, a seven-year-old, and it is the sweetest thing that you will hear. And we're going to play it for you now so that you can have a listen. But I think to get the full experience, you need to come over into our Facebook community group, which is the Art of Decluttering community, and actually see her beautiful face as she sings it with the joy that she has. So let's go to it, Jared. Um, And then I think, as I said, go over to the Facebook group to see the full experience of it. After you play, put it away. After you play. Put it away. After you play, put it away. After you play, put it away. Anything else to add to the decluttering and organising of purses and wallets, Amy? No, I think we're all good. Have you got a review to read? Because I do not. I do. It is from Love Organising and the title is very thought-provoking so she he they say hi ladies i love your podcast thanks for being oh, sorry thanks for helping us get through iso love how relatable you both are Kirst, 
I love that you get emotional emotional when you're exhausted because <laughs> now I know I'm not alone. So thanks for your vulnerability. That's what the are you best. laughing at? <laughs> yes. And what a great friend you are, Amy. I must admit that I have enjoyed ISO because I'm an introvert for that laughing based. Initially, I got stressed, but I just determined that I was going to make the most of it. And reframing has made all the difference. Keep up the great work, heart, heart. Aww, that's what awesome. awesome. So thank you so much, Love Organising. And I, if you um, would love to do a review for us, we would really appreciate it because it just helps um, our ratings. Um, and helps us tracking in in podcast land. Um, so you can do that on any platform that you have access to reviews, um, that particularly Apple Podcasts. Yay. Well, enjoy decluttering your wallet or purse this week. Make sure you come and vote as to what my receptacle is called. And uh, we will <laughs> see you next week. Yay. Bye. Have a great week. Bye. Thanks for joining us. If you've learnt something awesome today, we'd love you to leave us a review on iTunes or Facebook so others can find our podcast too. Don't forget you can see the show notes in your podcast app or over at our website, artofdecluttering.com.au. So if there's anything you want more info on, check it out there. If you'd like to join our supporter community, you can do so over at patreon.com slash decluttering. We hope you have a great rest of your day and enjoy the freedom. 